Hi there, this is Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films and welcome to another sort of random review. Um, this is just a video saying David Mamet's 1991 masterpiece Homicide is finally available on Blu-ray. Um, this is from Imprint and it's fantastic to see it um, on 1080p. Um, there's Joe Mantegna and William H. Macy with a fantastic moustache. Um, this has been released by Imprint in Volume 3 of their Neo Noir set. Um, and very much like the reason I bought Volume 1 was for One False Move, which at the time that was only Blu-ray worldwide release of that. Um, I bought this set because of Homicide. Obviously Criterion will release a 4K of Homicide quite soon. Um, just to rub my nose in it, but that's absolutely fine. Um, there's even a a nice quote by Mamet on the back of the box, along with a brooding Jack Nicholson. Um, so in this set you also get a nice little booklet um, with articles and pictures uh, written down in words. So this is spine number 320 to 325. Um, so Homicide is 320. Um, White Sands with Mickey Rourke, Willem Dafoe and Mary Elizabeth Mastroianni. Um, or Mastro Antonio even. Directed by Roger Donaldson from 1992. Um, which I haven't actually seen. I remember it out at the time. Um, but I'm looking forward to watching this, considering it's Willem Dafoe, who's arguably the best actor, actor of his generation. Unless he's the same generation as Christopher Walken, of course. Um, a commentary by DP Peter Menzies and director Roger Donaldson um, from 2024. Um, Heart and Soul, editor Nicholas Bowman, sifts through White Sands from 2024. High Noon Noir, writer Daniel Pine on White Sands from 2024. Um, and a trailer. And then 322 is The Crossing Guard, Sean Penn's second film as a director with Jack Nicholson, David Morse, Robin Wright and Angelica Houston. I did have this in DVD, so this has been upgraded. Um, it's a wonderful little film after the wonderful little film that was the Indian Runner. Um, and this has a ton of special features that are brand new. And there's an audio commentary, um, which was an archival one with Sean Penn, Angelica Houston, David Moore, cinematographer, um, Velma Zygmunt, um, production designer Michael Haller and playwright David Ray. There's a 2024 brand new commentary with film writer Travis Woods. And then there's a really nice piece with Sean Penn from 2024, Purging Vulnerability. Writer-director Sean Penn navigates the emotional territory of The Crossing Guard. Which, if you don't know, is about how um, a father deals with the hit and run death of his daughter um, by David Morse. Um, tough character in a tough world, actor David Morse on John Booth, the character he plays in the film from 2024. Um, emotionally exposed actor Priscilla Barnes on the character of Verna, who she plays in the film, strangely enough, from 2024. Changing Ways, editor Jay Cassidy on The Crossing Guard from 2024. Um, Rebels about causes, images of masculinity in Sean Penn's Crossing Guard, video essay by Kat Ellinger from 2024, which is wonderful. Behind the scenes vintage featurette and the theatrical trailer. So that's The Crossing Guard from 1995, another really good little American independent film from the 90s. Um, and they had a ton of really good American independent films in the 90s. Um, 323 is Heaven's Prisoners by Phil Jeanneau, who did State of Grace, um, with Alec Baldwin. Um, this is probably the one that I'm the least excited about, but obviously 
I'll watch it anyway. And again, this has new um, special features. There's a commentary by the director, Phil Jonu, in 2024. Um, Hell's Warden, producer Andre Morgan, remembers Heaven's Prisoners, from 2024. And there's archival interviews with Ali Baldwin, Mary Stuart Masterton, Kelly Lynch, Terry Hatcher, Eric Roberts, and di director Phil Jonu. And there's an additional archival interview with Terry Hatcher, behind the scenes vintage featurette, promotional vintage featurette, and the theatrical trailer, and that's from 1996. Again, I remember when that was out as well, um, but strangely enough, I never rented it from all good video shops. Then 324 is Under Suspicion, with Monica Bellucci, Gene Ackman, and Morgan Freeman. This is directed by Stephen Hopkins, who directed Predator 2. Um, this is from the year 2000. Unbelievable. If you remember the year 2000. And is it just me, or has Gene Hackman been in about six films where he's a really important person who rapes and murders somebody? Or is that just my imagination? He does seem to be in a lot of films where he's a powerful man who rapes and murders a woman. Um, anyway, maybe that's just my imagination. Um, this has less special features. Uh, it's just got a commentary with Stephen Hopkins and Morgan Freeman, which should be a lot of fun. And the making of Under Suspicion, which is a promotional feature it, and the trailer. And then finally, a film that I did have on Blu-ray, but I can move on from that. Stephen Freer's wonderful Dirty Pretty Things from 2002, um, spine number 325, with Chiwetel Gigi 4 and Audrey Tatau as the underbelly of London life um, and the life of immigrants and what they have to do. Um, Chiwetel Gigi 4 gives one of his finest performances um, as a Nigerian doctor who has to moonlight as um, a hotel concierge and a taxi driver. Um, Audrey Tatau, I think is Turkish maybe, who um, has to work um, in a kind of illegal clothing factory and is sexually abused by her boss. Um, it's a wonderful little film, great performances, especially by Gigi Four who should have went on to massive things, even with his performance after 12 Years a Slave. I mean, he should have been huge, because um, he's certainly way better than Denzel Washington. Um, this is a commentary by Stephen Frears, which is excellent. Um, and then an interview with director of photography Chris Menges from 2024, which is a little bit uncomfortable, because you can kind of tell um, his health isn't great, and it's, it is a little bit awkward viewing as he struggles to get sentences out at times um, and there's a behind the scenes featurette and a theatrical trailer that's Dirty Pretty Things which um, certainly I haven't seen three of these films but I would maybe say Dirty Pretty Things is probably the second best film in the set um, but I'm just going to talk about Homicide again I've talked about it before um, Previously, it's it's available on DVD Criterion. Um, the extras are different, so you only get an audio commentary by film historian Jim Hempel from 2024 and the trailer on the imprint release. Whereas the Criterion, um, you get a commentary with Mamet and William H Macy. Now Mamet is right up there with Cronenberg and Sales. And John Berman as just like fantastic commentaries. So I would highly recommend listening to Mamet commentaries because it gives you so much about writing, filmmaking. Um, and there's a loads of interviews with recurring Mamet actors, Stephen Goldstein, Ricky Jay, JJ Johnson, Joe Mantegna, and Jack Wallace, who are obviously all in the film. Um, and obviously you get a booklet. So as I said, as soon as I've bought this box set. Um, for Homicide on Blu-ray finally after all these years no doubt Criterion will announce that they're releasing it in Blu-ray because um, they have released Mamet's debut House of Games in Blu-ray um, 
So Homicide, if you don't know, this is about... Well, all of Mamet's films are about identity and cons. Whether it's cons performed by other people on us, or whether it's the cons you tell yourself. So this is Joe Mantegna, who is a cop, strangely enough, um, who is the hostage negotiator of his crew, of his unit, um, and there's a there has been a couple of police officers um, killed and they are on the hunt for Ving Rhames' character and Joe Mantegna has found leads and continues to find leads and he sets up a meet with Ving Rhames' mum but on the way to um, picking up Ving Rhames' brother for more information um, he gets sidelined and gets caught in this case of an old Jewish woman um, killed in her corner store in a rough neighbourhood and her son who has pull downtown um, requests Joe Mantegna's character Robert Gold to be part of that investigation um, which obviously annoys him because he's on this big case um, but he gets pulled um, and again it's over the investigation he kind of comes to terms with his Jewishness which he doesn't really pay that much attention to um, and he gets drawn into perhaps doing what he shouldn't be doing as a police officer as he somehow feels a bit more responsible and a bit more engaged with um, the Jewish people that he meets during this investigation. Again, this is a film that I think is one of the best American films ever made about race. Um, it probably wouldn't get made now because it suggests that not all Jewish people are nice and not all Jewish people are bad. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, I mean, it's a crazy idea. Um, But it goes into you know things like you know people you don't know calling you racial slurs is obviously unacceptable but your friends and partners can call you a racial slur and it's just banter so it's, it kind of talks about that kind of dynamic you know there's a scene in a library with a Jewish scholar and Mantegna is like I don't understand I don't speak Hebrew and then the scholar's like, well, if you're a Jew and you can't speak Hebrew, then what are you? And as the film progresses, Mantegna kind of comes to the realisation that he's, you know, where does his loyalties lie? You know, is he a Jew first or is he a cop first? And that leads to tragic, tragic um, consequences and tragic com complications. Um for not only himself but for um, his partner William H Macy in an early role with a great moustache um, and obviously there's a regular crew of mammoth regulars strangely enough it's full of absolute class mammoth swearing um, there's dialogue that I use to this day in it um, I'm not going to repeat it because it is quite sweary um, Great insults towards the FBI. Can't have enough of them. Um, now the ending. Some people might jump off the, the ship. But I absolutely adore the ending. Um, it makes me laugh. Even though it's probably not supposed to make you laugh. Um, you know you might be frustrated by the ending. But I think it, it works. Um, I remember recommending this film after a so I recommended it to my sister and some of her friends to watch because they wanted you know to watch like a, a cop film or something and of course it's not necessarily I mean I think it plays as a cop film and a cop investigation fairly well but it's obviously not your standard cops and robbers film and they were kind of bewildered by it which is always good I like to bewilder people when I recommend them films um, 
It's always been one of my favourites. I think it's Mamet's finest hour and a half. Again, you could perhaps say, well, the character Robert Gold has kind of denigrating the Jews and insulting them to then go to a character who is kind of drawn into the world and drawn into doing things that he shouldn't really be doing as a police officer for that group of people that he was denigrating happens quite quickly but again it is only like 101 minutes you know it is a film um, so obviously things in films tend to happen quicker than they would in reality um, but yeah it has a couple of flaws perhaps in believability but the Mamet dialogue is fantastic I mean there's a guy who comes in after killing his um, wife and kid with a deer rifle um, who just happens to be there when Joe Mantegna's character's um, in the police station and he asks Joe Mantegna whether he wants to know the nature of evil and Joe Mantegna's like no I don't want to know, know the nature of evil because then I'd be out of a job um, it's just full of wonderful, salty, pithy mamaisms. Um, but it does talk about stuff that you're not supposed to be talking about in the 21st century. There's no way it would get made now. Um, just because it is full of racial slurs and things like that. Um, by everybody, at everybody. But some of them are acceptable because it's somebody you know or your partner at work um, but then it's unacceptable when a stranger does it as I say so it, it kind of talks about race and racial slurs and the use of them um, which obviously nowadays it probably wouldn't even get a release um, but it is one of the most important American films in the 90s and as I said I think it's Mamet's finest work on screen. Um, Joe Mantegna is absolutely brilliant as you would expect as is William H. Macy as is the the Mamet regulars. Obviously it has that Mamet language rhythm um, that some people find a little bit off-putting. It has one of the best death scenes as far as you know dialogue is concerned of the dying person. You know how many times in films do people like give out all this information when they're at the point of dying and you know tell this person this and this person this and this person this whereas there's a character who dies in the film and they are just their brains going 100 miles an hour talking nonsense and then they just stop talking and um, so it is one of the more accurate cinema deaths um, as far as language as well um, no, because Mamet, whether you like his dialogue or not, he's always understood that sometimes people talk nonsense. Sometimes people repeat themselves. You know, people talk over each other. You know, it's not, I'll have this speech and then you have this speech and then I'll have this speech and then you have this speech. Um, his dialogue is very fragmented and repetitive and not perfect. It's not like a perfect jigsaw. Um, it's jagged and uneven. Um, it's tremendous I can't remember where it was in my favourite film 20, 25 films in the 90s but I'm sure it was pretty high um, and finally it's on Blu-ray but as I said no doubt Criterion will release a Blu-ray and a 4K of it which is fine um, yeah, it has this kind of lovely it's shot in Baltimore it has this lovely brown kind of hue to it um, the music is very mournful and melancholy, um, minus one scene, but even by the opening titles, which are very plain, and the music's very melancholy, violins, um, you, you know you're in for a wonderful time for all the family. So thanks very much for watching this randomish review of Homicide, even though I've talked about it a lot on this channel. Um, please let me know what you think of it. Whether you're planning to buy the Neo Noir Volume 3, I know with imprint they are quite expensive, um, especially if you don't live in Australia. I'm sure they're okay if you live in Australia. And hopefully you'll join me again for more rambling review videos. This is Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films, saying farewell. <laughs>